we have um, welcome everybody to today's class and in today's class we are going to see some vital things um on what you are seeing on your screen presently is what we'll be handling today and that has to do with how to draw isometric drawings and 3d objects I will repeat again how to draw isometric objects and 3D drawing. Don't forget, in the course of our training before now, we, uh, we, we started with this. And today now we are here, the last one, which is isometric drawing and 3D dimension. So we'll be, 3D model will be delving into that today so let me share a screen with you what the prototype of what we want to draw this is what we want to draw you can see now i told you the difference between isometric drawing and 3d modeling 3d modeling are real three dimension objects that you can see their length breadth and height unfortunately that is not present in isometric drawing isometric drawing combined it makes use of the same 2d you are used to uh, in uh, accomplishing this. This object you are seeing here now, I can achieve it with isometric drawing and I can achieve it with my 2D, uh, with my uh, 3D modeling. So now let's get things working so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, how did I come about this drawing? How did I achieve it? And how can you also draw your own? This is an isometric drawing now. And this is another typical one, you can see. You would think that this object is three dimension. Now, three dimension objects, by the time I click my view cube, this cube you are seeing in the northwest, by the time I click the one of the edges, three dimension objects will not look flat like this. You can see this object is looking flat because it's still a 2D, but it was drawn with isometric to make it look like three dimension. Now, by the time I draw three dimension for you, maybe once I'm done with this drawing, you are going to see the difference between them. All right. So I'm going to start a new drawing for you. The first thing you are going to do is, you will see that my screen, I have a cross section, I have a, a cross lining of vertical and horizontal uh, lines. That is called my grid lines. It's called grid line, G-R-I-D lines. And if you want to off it, you will off it at the bottom of your screen here, just here. If I want to put it on, I put it on. Now for my isometric drawing, I need these grid lines very well. So now how do I continue my isometric drawing? Don't forget, we are going to need this ISO line. We need ISO plane. And we need what we call snap style. So those are the three things that will make us turn the workspace, the, uh, the AutoCAD workspace area to making use of uh, what we are going to use. Now, um, don't forget our aim here, our aim especially here is to be able to draw, uh, is to be able to draw our isometric object. And once we are able to draw isometric object, it will be very easy for us to also draw other things. All right, let me start. Don't forget, I said we need some vital tools. So the first one is snap style. I will type it snap style. So that's the first thing, snap style. I select it. The first question it asks me is, I enter new value for snap style. Don't ask me much question because I'm going to punch one. Don't ask me why I punch one for now. Just do what I asked. Now, as soon as I punch one, you will see that my cursor and my workspace area turned. This was how it was before. It's flat this way. It's flat. You can see the cursor. Now, as soon as you type snap style and you punch enter and you type one, it flips the cursor. Now, with this, I can pick my line and start drawing. Now, whatever on your auto mode, whatever you are drawing now, is no more 
your two like that's your two D the way you draw your two D. It's now ISO drawing, isometric drawing. Because with this kind of drawing, you can draw something that looks like three D. All right, let me start by uh, drawing that same object we have on our screen. Let me start by drawing that same object we have on our screen. So since I have the drawing here first, I want to I want to believe that you understand how I flip the isometric of uh, the space. Now, what I'm going to do is that let me pan this object so that I can use the dimension on each of these sides for my uh, drawing. So you can see the dimension very well. So I'm going to start from here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to draw a line that goes 100. So you type, you will go and pick polyline. I want to use my P line. So I start, click. And the first thing is that ensure that your isoplane, isoplane, isoplane gives us three options. It's either you can draw left. If you pick left, your, your cursor can only draw something like this like this like this and like this sideways left now if i punch iso plane iso plane my cursor if i put it on top my cursor can only draw anything that is flat to the top that is flat to the top you can see the way it draw this is quite different from the way it drew the first one now if i press iso plane because it will give me like a 3d if I say you should draw right, see what is going to draw in the right portion. It's going to draw my right like this. Can you see? Can you see how it draws? So these three things are the things you will combine to make up this whole object you are seeing here. And these three ways of drawing makes isometric drawing looks like what? Looks like your, uh, looks like 3D. Is that okay? So now what am I going to do now? I want to what I want to do now, I want to, if you have any question, just drop it, I will read the question. So that's just it. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to uh, use the isometric drawing. I'm going to use, I'm going to use the uh, isometric drawing using the isoplane. The isoplane will allow me to be flipping around the isometric drawing in such a way that I will be able to blend right left top don't forget those are the three ways you can draw with your isometric drawing so i've erased that now let's start the first and the first starting is a left drawing so i'm going to pick my polyline and ensure that my cursor is facing left uh, right sorry is a right so don't forget those three things i drew first isoplane and i ensure that i see left top right so i'll click here let me give it some space. I'll click here and take my hand this way, 100, punch enter. Now, we are going up 30. It's still in the right plane. It's still in the right ISO plane, 30. Then I'll come this way by 40. The dimension is there. It's still in the ISO plane. Now, I'll, I want to go down down now for me to go down you should know that i can still make use of that right isoplane i'm coming down by 10 step i'll come this way this way is 20 it's still that same play plane come down by 10 come straight oh we miss out the dimension of that but the major thing is that you just know that you can have it anywhere here and you pick your isoplane in such a way that this place can just go up this way since your auto mode is on you can just pick your trim right click and trim off that place so you see we've achieved the first phase which is the right plane of the isoplane so i'm going to continue so what am i going to do now we need to do the top so I'm going to say isoplane this time around. I want to go top. So I'll pick my polyline and start the top. 
I'll click here. Damn. I'll click the top because I want to draw all shapes at the top now. I'll pick my isoplay, my polyline. I'll click here, then take my hand downward by 44 and pick my hand this way by 10 because all these short, short legs are 10. You understand? Then pick my hand this way. Now, you need to be very careful when you want to pick this dimension here. If you do your calculation very well, because the length from the other end to the other end is 44, and you have 10, 10 webs. So this place is going to be 44 minus 10, that's 34. Then I'll pick my hand this way. It's going to be 10 other side, 10 other side, that's 20 offset, 20 offset from 40, that's 20. So I'm going to have 20 here. Don't forget that I'm still in the top plane. I'm still in the top plane. So I'm going to have another 34 here. Then I'm going to have 10. I'm going to come back and ensure that I close up this. So you can see with that, I was able to draw this top. Now, I want to move down to the next step. How am I going to achieve the next step? Don't forget that I've already drawn this. I need to draw this so that I can combine this and this and continue till I achieve this. So it's going to be a combination of tops and left. Top, left, or right. Most times, left and right, you can interchange for each other. So take for instance now, take for instance now, I'm going to tell ISO plane, please change over to left. So I'll pick my polyline and pick that place and come down by 10, punch enter, close up, then come again, pick that same edge, but this time around, I want to come to the top. I will say ISO plane, please come to top. Pick my PL for polyline and click that same place and draw top. Now, this time around, the top is going to be 20 and punch enter, then continue. Another 10. Another 20. So you can see I've completed that. I can do the same here 10 and 20. Then and 20 for the tops. So I've done that. I will need some things again. So I'm going to say I saw plain. I need whether left or right. Anyone will work for, they can interchange as I told you. So this time around, I'm punching that place, turn downward. Now, because I need this, I can still do this then. And I need this to close up. So you can see, I've closed up very well. Then I can pick this edge and lock it up with this edge. So you can see, I can do this, click this, and come down by 10 and close up here. You can see, it's very, very easy to follow. So all I just need to do is click this and click this. So the next thing I want to do is, I'm going to change my isoplane to Top. So how do you interrupt a drawing you are already, you pick a two line and you want to change to isoplane, just up on your, just type your apostrophe and type whatever you want to interrupt. It means that I want to utilize isoplane quickly while I'm still on another two. So you just use your apostrophe and this time around, um, I don't know the dimension here. Let me just draw long since I can always trim whatever I have. So I can have this click 10. All the webs are 10. Click. I don't know what the dimension here is, but I'm going to get it. Let's let's use our pen so we can do the calculation. Now, if oh no, if from from here. To year is 100. What will be from year to year? Don't forget, from year to year is 40. From year to year is 20. That's 60. 60 minus 100, that's 40. So, which means if I pick my polyline, I'm going to have 40. 40. 40. All right. 
So with that 40, I can, oh, no, sorry, there will be a 10. So with that, I will be 30 here. Then I can turn in 20 this side, 20 that, uh, 10 that side, 10 that side, that's 40, uh, that's 20, 20 minus 44, that's 24. So you will need to just do a little uh, mathematics around that part. That's just what I'm trying to do there. So this one will be 20, 24 rather. Then this, I don't really know this, that we can always get the calculation out. So the next thing we are going to do is uh, we will need to get this done. I will change the ISO plane to left or right so that I can be able to complete some other parameters here. So 10 downward, then 10 close this up. Good. So you will see that we are already having the object in shape. So what's the next thing we need here? The next thing we need is how we're going to achieve this. How we're going to achieve this. So we, are need, we need to do some little calculation because this place to this place is 10. From this place to the empty space is 10, that's 20. So from that to this place, because we have the total length from here to this place to be 54. Uh, sorry, to be 44. That's going to be 20 minus 44, that's 24. So from here to that place is going to be 24. So we need to get that. So I'm going to change my isoplane. Or um, I'm going to change my isoplane so that I can have that. I think the mistake was from here. So we need to erase that so that we can change that. Isoplane um, top, good. Pick my line or polyline. We are using polyline so that all the objects can see themselves group. All right, so this time around, we're going to have, we're going to have 40. Then I'm going to have, yeah, that's correct. I'm going to have about 24. Whatever you don't get, you can always erase and come back to it. Take for instance, this part is not correct. So I'm going to have another 10 uh, polyline, another 10. So you form your object very well accurately. So this is very, very easy. You just need to follow the step. Just the step is all you need. Is that okay? Everyone, we just need a step. 10, or um, 10, 20, 20, 20. <coughs> all right. So 24, 14, um, 14, um, 14, 10, 10, 20. So you can see the way I'm <coughs> can see the way I'm approaching it. You just need to be very careful when you are drawing and so that you don't have to go all over or go all over, go all over. You just need to be following what you have on ground. Is that okay? So that is how to complete that. So I'm going to change my ISO plane back to uh, either left or right. ISO plane, please change back to left. And I'll pick my polyline. So once I punch my polyline, I can complete this first by saying this should go down by 10. Then it should go inward. Oh, sorry. It should go this outward. This time around, we need it up to this extent. So this time around, we will need it up to that extent. So 34. So I need it just that way. Then up. Good. So that place is going to form the basis where the wedge, wedge is a slanty line like this, that, that wedge. This point is going to form the basis of that wedge. wedge. All right, so let me complete this because uh, there's a place left out in this drawing. So we just need to complete it because it's very vital. Come down by 10, then hypostrophe isoplane change back to apostrophe iso plane change back to top good so 
what you're going to need next in your drawing is going to be much of trimming much of trimming all right so i'm done with this the next thing i'm going to do is i'll tell i'll just pick my iso plane and change it to left or right left or right so i'll pick my uh, i'll pick my poly line go up by 10 go to that side if you can see let me use my pan so that you can see what i'm drawing go to that side by 10 right so i'm going to change my iso plane come this way uh, top come this way see it has to come this way but now you need to decide what's going to be the length of that place you are referring to from here we don't have a specific dimension we just have 40 for the other side so you need to know what is going to be that dimension there but notwithstanding that does not disturb us because you can always complete every other details here so let's take for instance it's going to be 40 then i'm going to wear this place 10 then i'll close this place up now i can now pick my poly line and close the wedge from out bond to this out bond then the second one still my poly line I'll close the out bond to this out bond. And once I'm done, you can see we have replica of that same object, uh, that same drawing over there. So I think there is only one more thing we need to do, and that is to command isoplane to change to either left or right. Either left or right for the isoplane. You can see it's just a matter of switching the plane. That's why we call it ISO plane. It's just a matter of switching the plane. This one, you can let it go down. Only you can see maybe 50. So, but whenever you get there, you can trim, right click, and trim off wherever that is not needed. Because it's ISO plane, it looks, it must look like a 3D. And that is how we result, uh, we result to this. So, now it's not done because we have to do what we have to dimension what type of dimension will you use you use the aligned dimension because they are slanty so the aligned dimension will allow it to align you can see it aligns it's aligned that's why you are using aligned dimension don't forget you are using the aligned dimension you will use the aligned dimension it's under your annotation after the linear you have the aligned dimension the aligned dimension is used for dimensioning things like this so i hope you get uh, the basis of how to do this so and i want you to watch out for other drawings and especially uh, other 